All right, so we've talked about how uh, delta is depreciation, and then we assume that technology is growing at uh, technology A is growing at rate G, um, and then we assume that uh, labor force is growing at rate N. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to flip to the next slide. I should have looked at this a second ago. Right, okay, so let's think about how capital is going to evolve. Okay, so we're gonna think about the change in the capital stock at time t, and it's gonna be the, ch the savings rate, so the percentage of output that is saved or invested in this model. There's no difference between saving and investment. Okay, so this is sort of the flow of investment, and then we're subtracting off the depreciation of the capital stock. So uh, here I say, what is this equation really saying? It's pretty much what I just said, which is that the change, the instantaneous change in the capital stock is the instantaneous uh, amount of investment, which is just savings times the instantaneous amount of output. People are consuming it every moment, they're investing it every moment. And yt times dt, of course, is the instantaneous amount of, uh, of investment. In fact, another way to write this, just a, you know, it's the same thing, but let's just write it out this way. So k dot t, uh, by definition, k dot of t, by definition is equal to dkt dt. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by dt. So I'm going to get dkt is equal to sy of t dt minus delta k of t. Dt. Okay, so what this says is that the change in kt at any instant is equal to the instantaneous amount of output times the savings rate minus the instantaneous, if you like, uh, change in the capital stock. Okay, so that's what this equation is saying. Sort of the instantaneous change in, in kt is equal to the instantaneous change in investment times the, minus the instantaneous change in uh, in the capital stock. And the instantaneous because this little delta or dt here is like a very, very small increment of time, like an infinitesimal increment of time. Okay. So that's what this equation says. Just pushing forward. Okay, so our balanced growth path is not so what's the goal here of the solo model? If you remember back to your undergraduate uh, classes, uh, the goal of the solo growth model is for us to find a level of something that's going to be constant over time. Okay, so if we think we've, we've assumed that technology is growing over time exogenously, so that's never going to be constant. The level of technology is always going to be changing um, by assumption. The labor force, it's always going to be changing by assumption. Okay, so the capital stock uh, in a balanced growth path where uh, there's sort of one quantity that's not changing, uh, that's also something that we're going to want to be growing. Okay, uh, so the capital stock, that wasn't a great explanation, but the capital stock also is going to be changing in the long run. Okay, so we want to find a quantity, some quantity, that in the long run of this model, in equilibrium in this model, is not going to be changing. So what is that going to be? It's going to be our little kt. Okay, so we're going to assume that, not assume, but we're going to derive that eventually in this model, we're going to get to a point where little kt is not changing. Okay, so since that's true, what we really care about is not big k dot t, it's little dot k dot t. All right, so we're gonna have to derive from our, uh, from the equations that we've been looking at, what is little k dot t, okay? 
Okay, so let's think about that. So little k dot t. Well, let's write out the definition of little k dot t. That's d little k of t with respect to dt. Well, you know what? We actually know what little k t, uh, we know what the definition of that thing is. So that's going to be the change in big K of T divided by A T L T with respect to T. Okay, so uh, if you remember back to your rules of differentiation, uh, then we're going to have to use some product rule and some uh, product rule and quotient rule to get the answer to this equation. It's going to be somewhat complicated, but let's let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to pause here for a second. Just want to gather my thoughts before I go into a big uh, calculation and then uh, make sure that I do it in as clean a way as possible. So this thing up here, we're continuing it down here. We're going to use the product rule and the quotient rule, okay? So the product rule says that uh, we're going to take the derivative of kt first um, and fix at and lt. Then we're going to take the derivative of 1 divided by at, lt, fixing kt. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with big K dot t times 1 over at, lt. Right, that's the first step in the product rule. It's not a dot, that's an L. Ah, that looks good. Okay. Now we're going to use the quotient rule. Okay, so minus, we're going to fix KT now. So we're going to have KT times, let's do it with respect to, we're going to use the product rule again inside. Uh, so let's do this. So we'll have LT a dot t divided by a t l t squared plus, now we're going to have the opposite, a t times l dot t divided by a t l t whole thing squared. Close the brackets. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the definition of k dot t from the last slide in for this first equation. So I'm going to get s of yt minus delta kt, the whole thing divided by atlt. I probably should have dropped the t's here to made, a, made this a lot easier to write. But anyway... I guess it makes it clear because we have things changing over time. Here, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to recall that a dot t divided by a t, that's g. And here, l dot t divided by l t, that's n. Okay, So you're going to see that I'm going to cross out one of these a t's in the bottom and the a dot t and write g. And then I'm going to cross out one of the l t's in the bottom because I've got an l t in the numerator. But here I'm going to cross out one of the L, L, uh, L dot t and one of the LTs in the bottom and write n. And then I'm going to cross out the AT, AT on the top and one of the ATs on the bottom. Uh, so what will that give me? It's going to give me KT divided by AT LT times, and then here, n plus g, yeah, that's right the way I have it in the numerator, times g plus n. Okay, now let's take a look what we have here. Here we have a delta times kt divided by atlt. Here we have a kt divided by atlt. So actually what I can write here is equals s of yt divided by atlt. Sounds like we got some mail. Uh, and then put a minus here. Delta plus G plus N 
times, look at this, kt divided by atlt, that's just our definition of little kt. And here, this yt divided by atlt, erase it, that's actually our definition of little yt. Okay, our output per unit of human capital. Okay, so what do I conclude? That was a long calculation. I conclude that the first step here was little k dot t is equal to s of yt, little yt, minus delta plus g plus n uh, times little kt. Okay, and you'll see that there, this looks very similar to what we got for, uh, for kt. For KT itself. So just to go back one slide to show you, we have big K dot T is equal to SYT minus delta KT. We have something very similar. We have little K dot T is equal to SYT minus delta plus G plus N little KT. Okay, so it's the same except for now we have this G and the N. And again, the reason for that is because uh, k is being reduced each period by you know a fraction instantaneously delta but little k is also being reduced by the growth in a and l and it works in the same way so this is being reduced by a fraction delta but down here these are be, these are increasing and since they're in the denominator uh, the growth rates are going to kind of be the same as the way that the numerator is being decreased by delta so I'll erase that so it doesn't look confusing if you're looking at these slides without the uh, audio. Okay. So I'll stop there and then continue to the next slide.